Huh? Yeah. All right, so before we get started talking about chapter 16, right, um, remind everyone to write the homework for chapter 15 is due this evening. Um, right, and as far as exam two goes, we'll finish up chapter 16 and then we'll start Talking about chapter 17, just kind of see what we get to on chapter 17, exactly see what's on exam two, um, right? But again, that exam is at the end of this month. Um, are there any, any questions people have about sub subject material, course itself, related for other things before we get going here? All right, um, <clears throat> again, as a reminder, we're now gonna start talking about acids and bases, um, right? We're gonna talk about equilibrium involving acids and bases, so that will pop up um, a little bit later, either on Wednesday or Monday next week, discussion on acids and bases here in chapter 16. So, <clears throat> right, the equilibrium aspect, but first we'll just focus on what is an acid, what is a base, and things of that nature, okay? Um, and we'll talk about this throughout chapter 16, as well as in into chapter 17, when we talk about um, titrations and other such things, okay? Um, uh, okay, right, and so what we've talked about with equilibrium will pop up again in this chapter um, a number of times. So we'll keep ideas of equilibria in our heads as we go throughout this chapter, okay? Um, the chapters 15, 16, and 17 are kind of the most linked together chapters, if you will. Um, okay, 13 and 14 are relatively independent of each other, which are relatively independent of each chapters. And then chapters um, 18 and 19 on thermochemistry and electrochemistry are kind of their own things as well. So, <clears throat> all right. So, before we can talk about acid base equilibria, we got to talk about what is acid and a base. Okay. Now, the definitions of acids and bases have changed throughout the years. Okay. This, this change is not um, due to um, uh, like a consensus decision to, hey, let's start calling acids and bases different things, um, but more based off of a better understanding of chemistry and chemical reactions and things of that nature to be, um, that we, that uh, these newer definitions um, were developed in order to more broadly define what an acid and base can be, okay? So, these definitions are in kind of chronological order. First, there was the Arrhenius definition of an acid and base, then the Bronsted-Lowry 
which is what we'll focus a lot on in this course. Okay, but also, and then there's the Lewis definition of an acid and a base. Okay, and what is an acid or an Arrhenius acid is also an acid in Bronsted Lowry, also an acid in Lewis, and so on and so forth. Right, same with bases. Okay, but some things that are considered Lewis acids are not necessarily an Arrhenius acid or a Bronsted Lowry acid. Right, so, so these newer definitions were kind of developed as um, and proposed um, as our understanding of chemistry improved, and they encompass the same types of acids and bases that the older definitions did. Okay. Um, so, anyone know what the definition for an acid and a base is for the Arrhenius acid? Yeah, so for an acid, it's just H plus. A base, it's just OH minus those molecules. So Arrhenius acids and bases are literally just a molecule, H plus and OH minus. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Bronsted Lowry definition, this one we will use often in this class. Definition of an acid for a Bronsted Lowry acid is. Yeah, proton donor and a base is then going to be a proton acceptor. And then the Lewis acid and base. Yeah, electron pair acceptors and electron pair donors, right? So, right, <clears throat> these definitions, right? Arrhenius H plus OH minus ions, right? So, right, the Arrhenius definition of an acid and a base, very, very narrow. Right, literally these two molecules. Okay. All right. Um, Bronson Lowry expanded upon that, said, well, anything that can donate a proton in solution, okay, right, <clears throat> is an acid. Anything that accepts a proton in solution is a base. Okay. What is a proton? I mean, besides like a, a, a nuclear. Um, Particle, right? Neutrons, protons, electrons, right? Um, something on this slide is the equivalent to a proton. Yeah, H plus ion, right? So the, the hydrogen atom ion, right? The hydrogen atom is a proton and an electron. H plus means you've removed that electron. So it's literally just a proton, okay? So, right, H plus. So when we talk about protons, we talk about hydrogen atoms, right? Hydrogen ions, we're talking about the exact same thing, okay? So a proton donor, proton acceptor is something that will give an H plus to solution to something else. And an acceptor, right, is something that takes in an H plus bonds with H plus take in solution. Okay. Right. So again, um, proton is referring to these hydrogen ions, hydrogen ions, protons, same thing. Okay. Two names describing the same thing. Okay. And then the Lewis. Right, is that electron pair acceptor, electron pair okay. We'll focus a little bit more on Lewis acids and bases near the end of this chapter. Um, but for now, we'll kind of focus on this Bronsted Lowry definition of an acid and a base. Okay. So, any questions about kind of these definitions? Um, these are things, right? The definition of these different types of acids and bases are something you'll, you'll be expected to know. So keep in mind, right, the different types of acids and bases, Arrhenius, Bronsted, Lowry, and Lewis. Okay. All right, so often we will write in chemical reactions H plus ion, okay? Well, these chemical reactions are taking place in water. Those, those protons, those H plus ions are not by themselves in water. Okay, those things will react with water, form what is called the hydronium ion, H3O plus. Okay. So, right, this H3O plus hydronium ion um, in water, every single H plus will react with the water to form H3O plus. Okay. Right, if your reaction is taking place in water, there's a lot more water than there are your reactant products. Right. So there's plenty of water molecules to react 
with the H plus to form HBO plus. Okay. And, and the point of this is, is often myself, the book, um, if we were to take the ACS exam, ACS exam itself will interchangeably use H plus and HBO plus to refer to the same thing. Okay. So, right. Something that's a uh, proton donor, right. Donate H plus in the solution. Right, sometimes those things will have HBO pluses in the reaction. Okay, um, and we'll see as we go throughout the class today, the Wednesday, and Monday, some different examples of of where these things are used, kind of interchangeably. Right, but um, <clears throat> but the the technical description of what's going on in solution is that you have these hydronium ions in solution that get formed with those protons reacting with water. Okay, right. Um, but again, often we'll just write H plus ions still in chemical reactions, okay? Because it's simpler than writing HBO plus, right? Um, but again, I just want to emphasize that, right? If I have a one molar H plus solution, that's the same thing as saying I have a one molar H3O plus solution, right? Um, those, those ions are Different, you know, those labels, H plus, H0 plus, those are referring to the same thing in solution. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So, based off our Bronsted Lowry definition, then for this chemical reaction, HCl plus NH3 going to Cl minus plus NH4 plus, right? What here is the acid? And what is the base in this reaction? So HCl here is the acid, right? Because it's donating the proton, right? If I compare my reactants to products, this molecule has lost a proton, lost an H plus, right? And then NH3 has gained an H plus, right? So comparing my reactants to my products, Right, this guy has lost H plus, so it donated H plus, and then the other reactant NH3 here has accepted that H plus, right? So HCLs are acid, NH3 is the base in this chemical reaction. Okay. Right, and again, if you're not sure what's the acid or base in the chemical reaction, the the um the way at least I like to try to do it is as I was describing, right? I like to compare the reactants and products, right? And see what has changed between the reactants and products. And that will all, uh, typically indicate to you, okay, this lost H plus, this gained an H plus. So that tells me which thing is an acid and a base based off of how they've changed, right? HCl lost H plus, so it's the acid. NH3 gained an H plus, so it's going to be the base. Okay. Question? Right. So in the forward reaction for this equilibrium reaction, which substance acts as the Bronsted Lowry base? It's going to be A, H2S, B, C, H3, and H2. Or sorry, yeah, B, C, H3, and H2, right? C, H, S minus, or D, C, H3, and H3 plus. Zoom here, I got some people saying D. Um, any other thoughts? B's, A's, right? So let's, again, let's look at this chemical reaction, okay? I have H2S going to HS minus, right? So what's happened when I've gone from H2S to HS minus? I've lost an H plus, right? My charge went down by one and I lost a hydrogen. So H plus has left, right? That donated H plus when you went from the reactants to the products. So H2S here is donating an H plus. So it's an acid. Then if I look at CH3 and H2, 
compared with CH3, NH3, right, plus. That is gained NH plus. So this molecule has gained H plus, right, as it goes from reactants to products. So this is the base in this chemical reaction, right, in the forward reaction. So, so right, in the question here, this is equilibrium reaction, so they're technically a forward and a reverse reaction. So we're specifically asking for in a forward reaction, what is the base? And in this forward reaction, CH3 and H2 gains a proton to produce the product. And so it's gaining a proton, it's accepting that proton. So it is acting as a base. So B here, CH3 and H2 is the Bronsted Lowry base in the forward reaction for this chemical reaction. And B here is the base in the forward reaction. All right. Um, so right, that, that reaction brings an idea of, you know, if we were to look at the forward versus re reverse reaction, I have these acids and bases, um, okay, um, right? And so in, in these reactions, we can talk about something that's called a conjugate base, something that's called a conjugate acid. Um, and, and how would you say describe um, conjugate acids or conjugate bases. Yeah. So, so in terms of kind of their pairing here, right? That that say this acid, right, forms HS minus, which is considered its conjugate base pair, right? And then the base here. CH3 and H2 forms this acid, it's conjugate acid pair, right? Because if I look at the chemical reaction going from the products to the reactants, right? I look at the reverse reaction and I'd say, okay, HS minus going to H2S, well, that gained a proton, so this has got to be a base. And then CH3 and H3 plus going to CH3 and H2 lost the proton, so this is an acid, right? So in my reverse reaction, right, this is a base, HS minus. And CH3 NH3 plus is an acid, right? And so if you kind of pair these things up, right, you have this conjugate acid base pair, right? So this base forms conjugate acid. This acid will form a conjugate base, right? And so, right, a conjugate base, right, is the base that's formed from some acid in a chemical reaction, okay? So any acid base reaction, um, right? <clears throat> Essentially form an acid and form a base. Okay, and the base that's formed from the acid is considered a conjugate base. A conjugate acid is formed from some base in a reaction, right? Um, so some more examples of this, right? These two reactions again. In my forward reaction, I have HNO2 reacting with H2O. The HNO2 is donating a proton, right? It's giving up its proton to form NO2 minus. And then I form H3O plus, right? That acid forms a conjugate base. Okay. Notice, right, that the structure, like the chemical formula of the conjugate base, is just equal. To, oh, sorry, is equal to the formula of the acid minus a proton, and then you know reducing the charge by one, right? I re remove an H plus, and I form the conjugate base. From the base to form the conjugate acid, I add an H plus to that molecular formula, right? H2O going to H3O, so I've added the hydrogen, then I increase the charge by one, okay? Similarly, in this reaction, right, I have this base NH3, which takes a proton from H2O, the acid, to form NH4 plus, okay? And OH minus, NH4 plus acts as the conjugate acid to this base, and <clears throat> H OH minus is then the conjugate base to this acid H2O. Okay. All right. So 
and we'd call these then conjugate acid base pairs, right? So every acid has a conjugate base pair, every base has a conjugate acid pair, right? These things are paired up, okay? Um, and the difference between these two molecules and the pair is an H plus on, right? The acid has an extra H plus compared to the base, or you can think of the base having one less H plus compared to the acid, right? Okay. And we'll note here, right, as noted on the bottom of the screen, right, that, that water can act as both an acid and a base, okay? And this will pop up again in a couple of slides. So I'll just point out here that water <clears throat> is one of the few molecules, not the only one, but one of the few molecules that will, that will often react as a base or an acid in a given chemical reaction, okay? Right, any, technically any molecule could be an acid or a base, but most molecules are either acting as an acid or as a base, but water will, will readily act as an acid or a base, okay? Um, all right. So questions about kind of what is a conjugate acid, what is a conjugate base, what is a conjugate acid base pair? Right now we're just throwing out kind of a lot of a lot of definitions, right, of how we define things in a chemical reaction, right? We're we're trying to define if I give you a chemical reaction and say this is an acid base reaction, right? We're trying to define what are we calling an acid, what are we calling a base, what are these conjugate acid base pairs and things like that. Because we can then use these definitions to help describe chemical reactions um, in the future and discuss how reactions might occur given the addition of acids and bases and stuff. So <clears throat> question here of what is the conjugate base for this acid H3PO4? A, B, C, D. Some people are saying A here, and B, right? Right, so, so to form the conjugate base, right, from my acid, right, that means, right, my acid is forming a base, right, so in like the chemical reaction that's taking place in, right, my acid forms a conjugate base, it has to act as an acid in that reaction, right, and so my acid has got to lose an H plus in order to form that conjugate base, and so to lose that H plus, we're going to form H2PO4 minus. Right, because I've removed the hydrogen atom from the formula and I've reduced the charge by one. Okay. All right. If I wanted to talk about what is the conjugate acid to this thing, if it was a, acting as a base, then A here would be sort of the conjugate acid where you've added an H plus. Okay. Um, right. But to find the conjugate base of some molecule, that means that molecule is to be acting as an acid. If that molecule is acting as an acid, it's losing an H plus ion. And so the conjugate base has got to be H2PO4 minus, right? Then similarly, I could ask, like, what is the conjugate base? H2PO4 minus. And that would be C, HPO4 2 minus. And then the conjugate base of HPO4 2 minus would be then PO4 3 minus, right? Where every time I'm asking for, like, the next conjugate base, if you will, it's just removing an H plus ion from the previous molecule, find the conjugate base from that acid. Okay. Questions about this example? All right. Um, <clears throat> so these are definitions of acids and bases. Okay. Um, Okay, no, I didn't skip that. All right, good. Um, right, now when we talk about solutions of acids and bases and acidic solutions and neutral solutions, okay, often we are talking about the amount of protons in that solution, okay? And so whether or not some solution is acidic or basic or neutral, okay? But the concentrations of these protons are not, um, the, the, the number, the numerical value of concentrations of protons, H plus ions in solution, right, is not something that is 
a nice number to write things, right? They can often be very small values, one times 10 to the minus eight or something like that, right? And so we use these pH scales and say pOH and things like that, to talk about what the concentration is of these things in solution in a much um, simpler way in terms of numerically, okay? So, so what is the, the definition of pH? What is that like mathematical definition of pH? So I'm going to calculate, find the pH. I'm going to say that the pH equals what? Yep. Negative log of your H plus ion. Okay. All right. That is the definition of the pH. It's just negative log of H plus. Okay. Right, we do that because then the pH, right, of some solution that has a concentration of H plus ions is one times 10 to the minus five is just equal to five, okay? So instead of saying I have this acidic solution with H plus concentration of one times 10 to the minus five, I can say I have an acidic solution, a pH of five, okay? Right, so we, we, we use this pH scale to describe how much hydrogen ions are in a solution Okay, um, and we just use it because it's just a simpler kind of scale, simpler way of describing this H plus ion concentration, okay? Right, and then we see this pH right, pop, pop all the time in different products we buy, right? You can look at the pH of some product, right, that you purchase um, potentially, right? Either some food item or, or um, some cleaning supply or things like that might describe the pH of that material, right? And they use the pH they say, oh, it's a pH of 4.2 or something like that. Instead of saying, oh, it has a concentration of H plus ions in this bottle of, I don't even know what 4.2 is, like uh, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 or something like that. I don't know what that conversion is off the top of my head, right? But, but yeah, so we use this pH scale as a much simpler way of describing things, okay? So definition then of pOH is going to be very similar to pH, just Right, pOH is then just the negative log of H plus ion concentration, right? And in general, the P of something, so, so we'll talk about um, PKAs, PKWs, like P of other stuff. The P of blah is the negative log of that thing, okay? Um, right, the P of H is the negative log of H plus ion concentration. P of OH is a negative log of OH minus ion concentration, right? So, so we're, we're going to talk about um, like pKa. And so I'll just like, right, we'll just say things like pKa, right? And ask, what is that? Well, that just equals negative log of your K, oops, Ka, okay? Um, which and Ka is an equilibrium constant for an acid, right? Um, but, right, so um, we'll talk about, you know, these different things, right? So the P of something is just a negative log of that thing, okay? So it, at, when we later talk about these PKAs, PKWs, and other such, right, that's what we're referring to, just the negative log of that thing, okay? Um, so anyone have have idea of like what is the pH of a neutral solution? Seven, right? pH of a neutral solution is seven. pH of an acidic solution less than seven, and therefore pH of an basic solution is greater than seven, right? So we have this pH scale. Um, moved it wherever I'm. Right, um, right. So your pH scale, right, has um, oh shoot, this is the pH scale. Wrong slide. Do I have it? Ah, here we go. Right. So your pH scale. So we'll go back to that other one. Um, right. But your pH scale, right, a neutral solution is a pH of seven. 
our blood is pretty close to being neutral of a pH of seven, as an example here. So there's a bunch of different examples of, you know, acidic and basic solutions. Okay. All right. Um, pHs less than seven are acidic. Okay. Right. Coffee. Right. Wine. Tomatoes. Vinegar. Lemon juice. Right. These type of things. Your stomach acid. Right. All are very acidic solutions. Okay. But pH less than seven. Note here that the smaller the pH, the larger the concentration of H plus ion. Okay. So there's this inverse relationship, right? That the smaller number for pH means that your concentration of H plus ions is larger. Okay. So a more acidic solution has much more H plus ions in solution, right? And a more basic solution has a lot fewer H plus ions in solution. Okay. So these basic solutions have very large pHs. Okay. Um, Lime water, household bleach, very basic solutions have very um, high pHs and very low concentrations of H plus ions. Okay. And then um, we'll talk about more about the relationship between pH and pOH um, in a minute. We'll get back to kind of the bottom of the slide. But um, right, the larger the pH, the smaller the pOH. Okay. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll get back to this relationship between pH, OH minus, and H plus. So we'll come back to this pH scale. I just want to kind of, when you talk about what is acidic, basic, and neutral solution, neutral solution has a pH of seven, which means a concentration of one times 10 to the minus seven H plus ions. And acidic solution has a pH less than seven, which means it has a concentration of H plus greater than one times 10 to the minus seven. And the pH greater than seven is a basic solution and it has an H plus ion concentration less than one times 10 to the minus seven. Okay. So it's kind of, right, the six solution um, has again this H plus ion concentration greater than seven. Um, and the basic solution has H plus ion concentration less than one times 10 to the minus seven. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, Questions about definition of pH, definition of pOH. We'll talk about the relationship between those two things in a minute. Um, let me get rid of this pKa thing for now because I really don't put the slide right. But again, acidic solution has a pH less than seven. Basic solution has a pH greater than seven. Neutral pH equal to seven. Neutral solution is called the neutral solution at a pH of seven because the pH of pure water is seven. That's why it's considered a neutral solution. It's the pH of water itself, which is seven. Okay. All right. Um, right. <clears throat> so talking about, um, we, we were talking about these acids and conjugate bases. Okay. And so this slide here, the scale is just kind of emphasizing another aspect of an acid conjugate base pair. Okay. So if I have a strong acid, and I talk about its conjugate base, right? So HCl is a strong acid. Its conjugate base is Cl minus, right? The conjugate base, you remove a proton from the molecule, right? So HCl is a conjugate base, Cl minus, right? That base, that conjugate base, basically doesn't even act as a base. It's a negligible ba uh, base acidity, okay? Um, right, this, these conjugate bases of a strong acid don't even act as a base themselves in solution, okay? They'll never react Okay, Cl minus is not going to act as a base to form a HCl acid. Okay, so the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. Similarly, we have things that are very strong bases. Okay, these strong bases, the stronger they are, the weaker their conjugate acids are. Okay, right? Like CH4, we never consider an acid in solution, right? That's because it will never act as an acid in solution. Okay. Um, um, and its conjugate base, CH3 minus, would act as a very strong base. If you ever had CH3 minus in solution, it's going to take a proton from something very quickly. Okay. Um, it very much wants a proton. Okay. It's a very strong proton acceptor. Right. So these, right. And then we get these areas when we'll talk more about weak acids and weak bases. And again, the idea is the stronger the weak acid, the weaker its conjugate base. The weaker the weak acid, the stronger its conjugate base. Okay, so there's an inverse relationship between the strength of an acid and its conjugate base, 
or a base in its conjugate F. Okay. Stronger one thing is the weaker the other thing, right? And it should make some sense, right? Because an acid, by definition, is something that wants to give up a proton, right? Wants to donate a proton. And a base is something that wants to accept a proton, right? So if I have some molecule, okay, that wants to really give up a proton, right? Once it gives up that proton, it doesn't want it back, right? It's not going to want that proton back. So it's not really going to accept any protons, and it's not going to act as a base, right? And so the more something wants to give up a proton, the stronger it is as an acid, and the weaker it's going to be as a base because it wants to give up that proton, and it's not going to want it back once it gives it up, right? <clears throat> so again, that's why you have this kind of right inverse relationship between the strength of an acid and its conjugate base, okay? Questions about this? Right, so if I gave you a list of a bunch of acids in terms of increasing acidic strength, right, and ask what's the strongest base, well, right, the strongest conjugate base, right, the strongest conjugate base would be whatever the weakest acid is in your list, right? So I need to identify what is my weakest acid. That weakest acid is going to have the strongest conjugate base. Because again, if it's not acting very strong as an acid, that means it's more willing to accept protons, so it's going to be a stronger base. Okay. Right. <clears throat> now all of these acid-base reactions we talk about take place in water. Right. Water has what's called these auto-ionization reactions, okay, which can be written in two ways. Right, you can talk about it as two waters reacting to each other to form OH minus and H3O plus, where one water acts as an acid, one water acts as a base. You can also think of it if you want to as sort of this, this dissociation reaction of water, where water will break down into H plus ion and OH minus ion in solution, right? Like both of these are equilibrium reactions. They're describing the exact same thing, okay? So you'll often see this auto ionization reaction written in either of these two ways. And then each, right, this equilibrium reaction has an equilibrium constant, K, which we're going to define as KW for this very specific reaction. So KW refers to this auto ionization reaction, okay? And so KW, um, right, can be then written as H3, H plus times OH minus, or H3O plus times OH minus, right? Again, H plus, H3O plus are used interchangeably, so I could use either one of those things in its definition, and it has a numerical value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees Celsius, okay? Right. And so every single reaction that takes place in water that's an acid-base reaction, there's always going to be this equilibrium reaction happening in the background. And what that means is that in every solution of water, concentration of H plus times concentration of OH minus has to always equal 1 times 10 to the minus 14. It will never equal something different. It will always equal 1 times 10 to the minus 14, okay? Because this equilibrium is always going to be established and taking place in that solution, assuming water is your solvent, right? So any reaction taking place in water, concentration of H plus times concentration of OH minus will always equal 1 times 10 to the minus 14, okay? And so we can use this then to convert between concentrations of H plus and OH minus in solution. So for this first example, right, I want to know, right, what is the concentration of OH minus in a solution where the concentration of H plus is 2 times 10 to the minus 16? Okay, this is the very first example and the handout. Okay. Where did that go? Perfect. All right. So, right. Very first example, right? What is the concentration of OH minus when I have concentration H plus in solution, right? Again, in solution, this is again applying like water as the solvent, right? Which we're, we're just going to be using water as the solvent, right, for any acid-based reaction. 
Water is always the solvent. Everything is always taking place in water. Okay, right. And so, right. That means that this reaction H two O, you know, going to H plus plus OH minus, is happening. Does exist. So in this solution, the equilibrium constant Kw equals one times ten to the minus fourteen equals concentration of H plus times concentration of OH minus. Okay. Again, as long as the solvent is water, okay, this is true. So in the problem, I told what the concentration of H plus is, so I can use this relationship to solve for the concentration of OH minus, right? Concentration of OH minus is just equal to one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by the concentration of H plus. Okay, so in this problem, right, one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by two times 10 to the minus six. Okay, so this gives you the concentration of OH minus equal to five times 10 to the minus nine moles. Okay. All right. So again, this, this auto ionization reaction, right, is this equilibrium reaction that takes place in every solution of water. Every single solution of water ever, anywhere in the world, always has this equilibrium reaction going on. And because there's this equilibrium reaction, right, right, we talked about the shot liage principle, how, you know, things, right, do, you know, react and do different things to, to reestablish equilibrium, right? So that if you increase concentration of H plus, right, in the solution, right, this OH minus is going to decrease. It's going to <clears throat> be consumed in some way, and its concentration is going to go down in that solution. Okay. Right. <clears throat> And so, right, and so as you increase H plus, the concentration of OH minus has to go down. As you decrease the concentration of H plus, the concentration of OH minus has to increase, okay? Because they always are gonna be related to each other from this auto ionization reaction, okay? Always gonna hold the case, hold true, right? And it's kind of a side question for this reaction, right? Given the concentration of H plus in this solution, would this reaction be considered Acidic, neutral, or basic. Concentration here is two times ten to the minus six molar. It's going to be an acidic solution, right? A neutral solution, um, right? A neutral solution has a concentration of H plus equal to one times 10 to the minus seven molar, right? Acidic, right? So an acidic solution, concentration of H plus is greater than one times 10 to the minus seven molar, right? For basic, right? Concentration of H plus is less than one times 10 to the minus seven molar, okay? Oh, sorry. I know I that wasn't on the screen, right? So for neutral solution, it's one times 10 to the minus seven exactly. Aesthetic is greater than that. Basic is less than that, okay? So in this problem, right, our concentration, two times 10 to the minus six is a larger number than one times 10 to the minus seven. Not by much, but it is larger, right? Um, and so this will be an aesthetic solution, okay? All right, so let's let's do some of these other examples here since we kind of um, talked about some of these things, right? Talk about pH, right, is the negative log of H plus, right? So let's find the pH of lemon juice, which has an H plus concentration of 3.8 times 10 to the minus four. Okay. Right. So again, to find the pH, we use the definition of pH, which is the negative log of the concentration of H plus, so you take the negative log of 3.8 times 10 to the minus 4 
which as um, was stated is equal to 3.4. Okay. That is the pH of this solution. Okay. Um, I put 2.42 to talk about significant digits. Okay. Um, so we'll go, I'll, I'll come back to this again, but I'll, I'll use this as yeah, talk about significant figures with pH. Okay. So for pHs, the number of decimal points you include in a pH is related with the number of significant figures in your H plus ion concentration. So here in the example problem, we had a con uh, two significant figures. So our pH, we go out to two decimal points, okay? Again, in this class, I'm not going to worry about significant figures, okay, um, for this stuff, but potentially in lab they will, in future classes they will. Um, and so I want to just highlight, um, you know, this after that, 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 um, that for significant figures dealing with taking pH of stuff, same thing with POH or PKA or whatever, right? The number of significant figures in your original concentration is equal to the number of decimal points that appear in your pH. Okay. So again, in the example, That we have here, right? Number of significant figures is two. And so my pH should go out to two decimal points, which is 3.42. Okay. Questions about how I got that pH? All right, so this next example, we're going to find the H plus concentration in tomatoes, given the fact that the pH is equal to 4.1. And this we haven't talked too much about, but um, <clears throat> kind of the, the title of the problem is telling you um, what it is, right? That concentration of H plus is equal to 10 to the minus pH, okay? Similar, um, right? The concentration of OH minus is equal to 10 to the minus pOH, right? Um, KW would equal 10 to the minus PKW, right? Um, right, which uh, as a reminder, right, PKW, right, would be the negative log of KW, okay? Right, which KW is that equilibrium constant for the auto ionization reaction of water, right, which happens to equal one times 10 to the minus 14, okay? Right. But, but yeah, so like OH minus concentration is 10 to the minus POH. And similarly, right, H plus concentration is just 10 to the minus pH. Right, so for this problem, I just didn't do 10 to the minus 4.1. Okay. And so in this case, my H plus concentration is going to end up equaling 7.9 times 10 to the minus 5 more. Or if I wanted to take care of significant figures, right, I'm getting a pH of only one decimal point, so I should only have one significant figure here. So if I wanted to do sig fig, right, I would say this is H plus concentration is equal to 8 times 10 to the minus 5 minutes, right? If I was keeping track of sig figs, that's what I would write, okay? Because again, the number of significant figures in my concentration of H plus is equal to the number of decimal points in my pH. Right. The pH here only had one decimal point, so I only have one significant figure in my concentration of H plus. Okay. So questions about these examples? We're gonna be doing this a lot throughout the course of this chapter and chapter 17 of converting between hydrogen ion concentrations and pHs and pHs and hydrogen ion concentrations. And then as we'll talk about in a second, pHs and pOHs, right? Converting between H plus and OH minus, right? These type of conversions in these first three example problems will happen a lot, okay? So get comfortable with them, get familiar with them, okay? Because um, we will see them 
see here. Um, so we just did this example here, right? Um, <clears throat> so you're, uh, where did I get h plus is equal to 10 to the minus pH? Um, uh, I mean, essentially it's, it's kind of the mathematical like anti-log, like the, the opposite of the logarithm function is 10 to the thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, if you're not familiar with logs and, and kind of anti-log and, and things like that, um, that's kind of where it comes from. And, you know, if you're not familiar with it, don't worry about it. Just remember that concentration of H plus equal to 10 to the minus pH. Okay. Um, okay. Other question. So here, what is the concentration of H3O plus in the solution, which has a concentration of OH minus equal to 8.9 times 10 to the minus nine base molar, right? A, B, C, or D. Don't have any guesses or confidence, not even guess, but you know the answer. So A here, A from online as well, right? So um, for this problem, right, how I would calculate this, okay, would be similar to the Problem, right, this first example we did up here, right? But the fact that one times 10 to the minus 14 equals concentration of H plus times OH minus, right? So, right, that, that um, one times 10 to the minus 14 equals, here I'll put H3O plus, right? Because that's what the label is used in the problem. But again, H plus, H3O plus, talking about the exact same thing with an H, I promise. Um, Okay, right, and so we're given OH minus, right? So the concentration of H3O plus is just equal to one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by our concentration of OH minus, okay? So that's how I would calculate it, right? Now, in this problem, I actually know it's A without having to do any of the math. Um, and it's because, so I know, right, for a neutral solution, the, the concentration of H plus is one times 10 to the minus seven, which is also the concentration of OH minus one times 10 to the minus seven, okay? And I know for any solution, right, that as I increase concentration of H plus, the concentration of OH minus decreases and vice versa, here, right? So I know that the concentration of OH minus here is less than one times 10 to the minus seven, which is what it should be for a neutral solution which means the concentration of H plus has to be greater than one times 10 to the minus seven, okay? So the only two options of the concentration of H plus being greater than one times 10 to the minus seven is A or D. And then I just know D is never, ever, ever gonna be possible, 8.9 times 10 to the five. Like the concentration of H plus are, are typically numbers less than one, okay? So you're, you're not, we're never dealing with, with 
solutions that have an H plus concentration of 8.9 times 10 to the minus five, not, not even ever gonna happen. Um, but yeah, so I know it's gotta be A just by inspecting the answers here. But again, you can calculate it out by doing one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 8.9 times 10 to the minus nine, and you will get 1.1 1 .1 times 10 to the minus six. But again, I get, I, you know, if I had a multiple choice problem, right, on a quiz or an exam or things like that, I could potentially reason out that the answer is A without ever having to plug anything into a calculator by again using the fact that, you know, in a neutral solution, H plus OH minus has concentration of one times 10 to the minus seven. So if one of those has a concentration greater or less than that, right, so, so again, if OH minus is less than one times 10 to the minus seven, H plus has to be greater than one times 10 to the minus seven, okay? Because they start off equal one times 10 to the minus seven. If one goes down, the other one has to go up and vice versa, okay? For this equilibrium to be maintained, which it is always maintained in these solutions, okay? So I know the answer has to be A. Okay? Again, the, this is emphasized kind of in this, the pictures in the slide, right? The neutral solution, concentrations of H plus OH minus equal, which is one times 10 to the minus 14. And the product of those concentrations equals one times, or sorry, concentrations themselves are one times 10 to the minus seven. The products are equal to one times 10 to the minus 14. Okay. An acidic solution, concentration H plus is greater than OH minus. Okay. And it's greater than one times 10 to the minus seven. But again, the product of those two things still always equals one times 10 to the minus 14. And in basic solutions, right? product still always equals one times 10 to the minus 14, but now the concentration of H plus is less than OH minus, and the concentration of H plus ends up being less than one times 10 to the minus seven in a basic solution. Questions about what is an acidic solution? What is a basic solution? Neutral, what does that mean in terms of pHs, pOHs, concentrations of H pluses, OH minus, Right, and so going back to this pH scale, right? Um, here, I, I, I want to go back to the pH scale. Um, so, so we've talked about um, concentration of H plus and OH minus equaling one times ten to the minus fourteen. Using that relationship, you can derive. It's done um, in the lecture notes and in the lecture videos online. Talk about the derivation, but it's the derivation is irrelevant. Um, but you can show that this means that the pH plus the pOH equals 14, okay? So we see here in this pH scale, right, that if I, ever, if I add up together the pH and the pOH, I always get 14, and that's because they always have to sum up to equal 14, okay? And so as your pH decreases, your pOH increases, and vice versa, right? pH increases, pOH decreases, Okay, they have these inverse relationships with each other, okay, um, opposite relationships with each other, just like concentration H plus and OH minus, right? If concentration H plus increases, concentration OH minus decreases, okay? So again, you see, right, for basic solutions, very large pHs, small pOHs, large concentration of OH minus, small concentration of H plus. Question about kind of this chart, this table, okay, relationships. I remember that, you know, these slides are all um, online as well right on the Canvas website. So you can always um, look at these slides, at, you know, whenever you want. Um, and it has, you know, these different relationships and figures as well. Um, okay. And so kind of summing up what we've been talking about with, right? So we talked about what is the definition of an acid in a base, right? Conjugate acids, conjugate bases, right? Talked about, right, stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base and such. And then we talked about then acidic solutions, basic solutions, neutral solutions, and how we describe those. 
in terms of pHs and pOHs and OH plus and OH minus and blah, 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 right? And so this slide here is just trying to sum up some of these equations that connect your hydrogen ion concentrations, your OH minus ion concentrations, and your pHs and pOHs, right? That, that if I want pH from H plus, I take the negative log of that H plus, right? If I want H plus from the pH, I take 10 to the minus pH, okay? Um, if I want to convert between pH and pOH, right? I use pH plus pOH equals 14. If I want to convert between H plus and OH minus ion concentrations, right? I can, you know, do one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by the other concentration, okay? All right. But so we have these different relationships to convert between these different quantities, okay? And so, <clears throat> and there, there's this little, you know, smiley face thing here, right? Telling you, don't forget, right? Know these relationships. These will not be given to you. Memorize these things, okay? Um, hopefully, they'll become kind of memorized in, in second nature as you do more and more examples with these relationships, okay? So you're going over the homework and things like that. You'll have to continually use these different equations in many different problems. As you go through example problems in this class, you will we'll do these conversions over and over and over again, right? So hopefully kind of these equations um, will become second nature to you, right? But just as a friendly reminder, um, right? You do need to remember how to do these things, okay? How to use these conversions. You do need to remember these Question. Slide. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, <clears throat> right in lab, um, we often uh, right we can measure the pH either by using something called a pH meter, right? She has potentially used in lab classes so far already. Okay. Um, when we talk about electrochemistry, we'll talk more about um, how these pH meters work. But essentially, the pH meters actually work by um, doing kind of electrochemical reaction and things like that and, and, and checking some things um, related to H plus ion concentration based off of that in your solution. So, um, how pH meters work is tied to electrochemistry. Um, right, but, but if you don't have a pH meter, another way you can try to measure or understand the pH of your solution is using what are called indicators, okay? So there's a list of a bunch of different indicators here. And what these are, these are different molecules that change to different colors depending on the pH of your solution, okay? So for like bromethyl blue, right, for solutions with a pH kind of less than seven, it's gonna be a yellow color. For pH is greater than seven, it's gonna be a blue color, okay? Right, um, <clears throat> right, for methyl red, pH is less than around five or so, it's gonna be red color. pH is greater than five, yellow color, right? So these different indicators have different ranges in which they change color, okay? And so, right, methyl red isn't necessarily going to tell you what is the pH of your solution at all pHs, right? It's not going to tell you the pH of two or pH of four because it's just going to be red at both those pHs, right? But what we can often use is if we want to know is our pH around a certain range, we can use these indicators to tell us is the pH, you know, around seven, right? Well, if right, I have some solution and I slowly add base or something like that and increase the pH from a red solution, once it starts to convert to yellow, then I know I'm around a pH equal to seven, okay? And this is relevant to, to titrations, which is something you'll do in lab. Again, I don't know if you've already done titrations yet in lab, but we'll also talk about it in chapter 17, but, um, okay. But so these indicators can be used to kind of measure a rough pH range in your solution for the pH range for these different indicators are highlighted kind of on this chart here. Okay. Um, right. Oh yeah. So that, that, that's what these kind of indicators are often used for is to measure pHs within a certain pH range. Okay. Um, 
And so you could also put these indicators in a solution where you know the pH and then see if the pH changes when you do something to that solution, when you add something or whatever, and you can tell if the pH changes as whether or not the color changes um, for your indicator. Okay. Um, but right before we had pH meters, this type of work was what was used to um, <clears throat> be able to determine the pH of solutions, right? Because again, for these pH meters, you had to use some sort of visual inspection of your solution. And that, that's where these indicators came from. It's a way to visually inspect and determine roughly the pH range of a given solution. Okay. All right. Um, so any questions about what we've been talking about? Definitions of acids and bases, H plus ion concentration, getting pH, conjugate bases, conjugate acids. All right. <clears throat> so let's start talking more about acids and bases and talk about strong acids. Okay. Strong base. So for strong acids, someone want to give me either definition or examples of what might be a strong acid. Okay. So H2SO4 is an example of a strong acid. Yep. Um, close. HNO3 is, is a strong acid. H, I guess HNO4 should be a strong acid as well. Um, but I, I don't think I would. Not sure if HNO4 is a stable molecule. Not HNO4, HNO4. Oh, HNNO4. Um, HNO4. Uh, I think that will be actually a weak acid. Um, HCl, strong acid, right? What about definition? What, 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 how would you try to describe or define a strong acid? Yeah, so right, the, the definition of what makes an acid a strong acid, okay, is strong acids. I'll give it right, the punchline on here, but right, so definition of a strong acid is um, an acid that completely associates, right, 100%, right. Um, Right, so you know H A goes all the way to H um, H plus plus A minus. Right, um, right. So a, a, a strong acid, right, is an acid that completely breaks apart. Okay, every last one of its protons, it gets rid of. Okay, that is a strong acid. Completely dissociates, gets rid of every single proton. Okay, so what that means, okay, for a strong acid, is the concentration of that acid equals the concentration of protons in solution when you dissolve that acid in solution. Right. So if I have a two molar solution of HCl, which is a strong acid, that means in solution I got two molars of H plus ions. Okay, because this reaction HCl going to H plus plus Cl minus goes to completion, 100% dissociates, 100% happens. So if I have two molars of HA, that means I get two molars of H plus in solution and two molars of A minus in solution, right? So, so the concentration of my acid directly equals the concentration of the protons, those hydrogen ions in solution, okay? Right? So examples are these guys, okay? These are your strong acids. Memorize those lists of strong acids, because those, all right, okay, these are your strong acids. These are the strong acids we deal with. In this class, these are strong acids we have to know about. We need to know this list of strong acids, and that is it. And every other acid besides what's on this slide right now is a weak acid, okay, which we'll talk more about weak acids on Wednesday, okay. But these are your list of strong acids. If you you have an acid and it's not on this list, it is not a strong acid. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> all right. So every one of these acids 
strong acids means that the concentration of that acid, um, right, uh, equals concentration of H plus ions in solution. It also means, right, that the conjugate bases of every one of these things, um, except for H2SO4, we'll, we'll not worry about that right now, this is a polyprotic acid. But so conjugate base of all of these molecules, okay, besides H2SO4, um, it is a negligible acid or negligible, negligible base in solution, right? So the conjugate base of HBr is Br minus, okay? That's not gonna act as a base in solution does nothing in solution. It's gonna be a spectator ion, does nothing, doesn't matter in solution, right? The conjugate base of HClO3 is ClO3 minus, right? That ClO3 minus is just a spectator ion. It's not gonna act as a base. It's not gonna do anything in solution, okay? The only one here that's not that same way is H2SO4 because the conjugate base of H2SO4 is HSO4 minus, which does not ever act as a base but it will act as a weak acid, okay? And that's just because this is a polyprotic acid, which we'll talk more about. Polyprotic acids, again, next time. Um, but just mentioning here, right, that, that um, this is the only one where it's conjugate base might actually do something in solution, right? But the rest of these guys, their conjugate bases are negligible bases, right? If I go back all the way to uh, this chart, right? CL, HCL, right? Conjugate base was CL minus, right? Um, which it's a negligible base, right? HNO3, it's conjugate base, NO3 minus, negligible base, it will not act as a base at all in solution, okay? All right, do a quick example here then of a strong acid. All right, let's find the pH of 0 0.25 molar nitric acid. So we're looking at this problem here. Find the pH of 0 0.25 molar nitric acid. Nitric acid is HNO3. Right, it fully breaks apart with H plus plus NO3 minus. So if the concentration of my nitric acid is 0.25 molar, what does that tell me about the concentration of H plus ion in solution? Yeah, it's complete dissociation rate, concentration of HNO3, right? So 0 0.25 molar, right? Concentration of my acid is equal to the concentration of my hydrogen ion in solution when this acid dissolves in solution because it completely breaks apart in solution, right? Every last mole of HNO3 forms H plus and NO3 minus, and I get none left of HNO3, right? So in solution, right, this reaction goes to completion and I get nothing left there, and I just have H plus ions in solution and NO3 minus ions in solution Right, so this reaction goes to completion. So the concentration of the nitric acid, HNO3, just equals the concentration of H plus ion. So the pH, right, is just equal to the negative log of my concentration of H plus ions, which is 0.25, okay? So the pH here, right, equals 0 0.60, okay? Take a negative log of 0.25 and you'll get 0 0.60. Um, and that is the pH of this 0.25 molar nitric acid solution. Okay. And again, I know that's the pH because I know this is a strong acid. I know strong acid completely dissociates. So every last molar of my nitric acid forms the equivalent amount of molars of my H plus ion. And so I know I have 0.25 molar of H plus. And then I can just use that, take the negative log of it to get the pH, okay, get pH equals 0 0.60 moles. Okay. Any questions about this example?
Um, I think we will stop here. Um, next time we'll talk about strong bases, do some examples of those, and then focus a lot more on weak acids and weak bases okay, on Wednesday. Okay. Right. You can keep those chapter 16 examples right. Um, don't forget to turn in your participation questions on the back table as you leave. Yeah. But any questions from people on Zoom here before I close out? Like, nope. So I will end the Zoom session here and see you guys on Wednesday.